Alright, so we got Trevin Giles versus Trickus Duplesis. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Trickus, or I might call him Duplesis from here on. Just a bit easier for me. <laughs> Uh, he's got a 1 inch height advantage and a 2 inch reach advantage, slightly bigger bloke. Uh, all of his fights have not gone to decision, so that's 17 out of 17. Um, so yeah, and I doubt this one will as well. Um, Alright, so Trevin Giles, you know, he's been in the UFC for a while. He's uh, He's got fast hands for a 185er, he's got good distance management, especially when he's firing in all cylinders, like he was in the Bevan Lewis fight, or late in the Bevan Lewis fight. Uh, so, Duplesis, he's coming from a kickboxing background. He's got very good leg kicks. He mixes it up quite a bit. He throws inside leg kicks, outside leg kicks, to the calf, to the thigh. Uh, yeah, you can tell he comes from that kickboxing background. Uh, also, with Trevor Giles, he's got a very nice stiff jab. Uh, but, you know, in turn, he can be very heavy on the lead leg because he's looking for easy access for that jab. Uh, and, you know, that's something... Duplesis can definitely look at because he's got very good low kicks. Uh, on the feet, well, on you know, with his hands, Duplesis will blitz in with a 1-2, you know, 1-2-1, 1-2-3, you know, basic combinations. Uh, I'd probably say with the hands, pure boxing, uh, Trevin Giles definitely has the advantage. And, uh, you know, Duplesis is kind of open for counters. He, uh, you know, when he throws his offense, he's... You know, with his blitzes, his chin's in the air, his hands are low, his hands are occupied. Uh, he'll also just throw naked leg kicks with his hands low when he kicks. So, you know, against a skilled counterpuncher, he could walk into trouble. Uh, you know, maybe even Trevor Giles will be that guy. Um, because he does have a nice counter too. Um, and yeah, it's pretty accurate. He's a very accurate striker. He just doesn't keep the volume up, does Trevor Giles. And uh, Duplesis, he can also back up straight onto the fence. Uh... You know, when he gets onto the fence, he'll generally look for grappling situations, uh, which is where Trevin Giles has definitely suffered in his career so far. So, on the mat, Duplesis does have a good sit-down guillotine. He's caught a few opponents with that recently in his career. Uh, he he will do it when his opponent's on all fours, if they're turtled, you know, uh, or if they shoot a takedown with their head on the inside, uh, he'll look for that guillotine quite, quite to a high frequency. And... For Trevin Giles, he his takedowns are the best, but once he does get to the mat, he or once he does, you know, get on top, he does have very aggressive ground and pound. Uh, but he, yeah, once he does try and get to an a you know a mount or a or a take the back, he can get a little too high and then end up on bottom. It's just he's been counted a lot. Uh, he's been reversed a lot in the UFC, and it's, if you look at his losses, it's generally how he's lost. He's been beaten in the grappling. Um, but yeah, Duplesis, he sometimes, you know, he doesn't set up his takedowns at distance. He kind of just, um, dives in for them hands first and tries to get onto the hips and then drive you to the fence and go for the takedown there. I'd say his body lock takedowns are much better. He has a really nice suplex, uh, which, you know, Trevor Giles doesn't exactly excel in the hand fighting department. So you can absolutely get on the body lock with Trevor Giles. So how these guys win their fights? Uh, for Trevor Giles, he's very accurate. Uh, you know, it can be a double-edged sword at times because he does become, you know, low volume from that, you know, perf you know, perfectionist type of style that he has. Because he's very accurate. I think it's like 60% of his shots, you know, land, and that's, you know, very, very good for a, for a striker who doesn't generally go to the ground too often. Uh, but also, he's just very fast. He's very athletic. Um... If he was just a, had a little bit more hustle, I bet he would win a lot more of his fights. And also, fight IQ is a big part of it. Uh, but yeah, for Duplesis, he has some kind of weird KO power. I'm not 100% sure. Um, we'll see as his career progresses. But, you know, on the regional scenes, he had a few KOs that they didn't seem like too deadly of punches, but his opponents just went out cold. And you saw uh, against Marcus Perez, he... He caught him, you know, behind the ear, so that kind of that G spot for your equilibrium. Uh, but he's he's shown that in the past for me to believe that he does have some kind of weird KO power because uh, Perez very you know, very durable and it was it was a really innocuous hook that he threw against Perez. Uh, it was kind of the same as Kane versus Ningano. So, and we know Ningano, it wasn't just a 
it wasn't just a uh, fluke. So I'm kind of seeing the same, I'm kind of getting the same kind of vibe from Duplicis, uh, that he has kind of, you know, some decent power in his hands, but he doesn't let him, he doesn't let him go too much. Uh, but also, he has good leg kicks, uh, he's got a nasty guillotine when his opponent shoots, and just in general, he's a very dangerous dude, he's always looking for the finish. Uh, so how he loses is that he can be uncomfortable when pressured. We saw early in the Marcus Perez fight, he was fairly uncomfortable, covering up quite a bit, biting on feints, uh, when Perez came out really really uh, hard in the first round, and also the striking tendencies that we talked about before. Uh, for Trevor Giles, yeah, it's the flat IQ, which we talked about. Uh, so, you know, especially in grappling situations, I think he overrates his skills on the mat, in my opinion. Like, he engages in grappling situations a little too often when he's so limited on the mat. Like, a good example is the Mearshart fight. He just kept engaging in grappling situations where, you know, that's exactly what Mearshart wants you to do. Uh, so yeah, it's quite frustrating if you have money on him, and he keeps doing that kind of shit, but, yeah, there's not much else I could say about it, really. Uh, but, I, yeah, I'm not sure if he needs to get one back. If he gets taken down, he needs to get one back on the mat, or he wants to be, like, a John Jones type, and then kind of beat the opponent where they're best. I'm not quite sure, because, yeah. It's the poor fight IQ at the end of the day. Uh, but also, on his back, if he does get reversed or if he gets taken down, he's he's a fish out of water. He's not very good off his back. And he's fairly one-dimensional in the stand-up. You know, 85% of his strikes come to the head, and he doesn't kick at all, really. Uh, so, yeah. I'll just pull up the stats here. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. 85% of the strikes to the head, barely any low kicks, any, you know, body kick, body punches, mixes it up a tiny bit. Uh, a lot of his offense is done standing. I say a lot of the ground strikes are non -im non large. You know they don't do a large amount of impact because generally a lot of the time he's striking off bottom. Uh, but yeah, when he does get on top, it's not a situation that he generally initiated. It's if he slipped out of a you know a back mount which his opponent had on him, and he turns around and starts throwing GMP again or whatever, or you know if he his opponent slips off, and then he's on top. Uh, but yeah, so you, you can see six uh, six of his wins are by TKO, five are by sub. Five by sub are all on the regional scene. I don't think he's shown very good grappling in the UFC, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, so that's the kind of breakdown of the stats. But yeah, we'll get back into the past to victory for these two. All right, for Trevin Giles, uh, forward pressure on the feints. Uh, he doesn't generally tend to throw many feints, but I think he would do it handy in this fight. Also, just the stiff jab from distance. Uh, just use that to keep distance so he's not shooting on you 24-7. Um, also, yeah, hit the body when he's covering up, because Duplicis, as we saw in the Marcus Perez fight, was covering up, backing up to the fence, open to the body shot, so, you know, m might mix it up here, hopefully. Uh, also, if you do get in the clinch, I didn't, I wasn't impressed with Duplicis's clinch control slash clinch awareness. I think Trevor Giles can absolutely control him in the clinch. Uh, but yeah, if you're not having too, too much success on the feet, look to get it to the ground, but just be careful of that guillotine when you're shooting. Because uh, I do believe on top, Giles will be not in too much danger. Because yeah, Duplicis didn't look great off his back. It's more in those scrambles that he's really dangerous. Uh, for uh, Duplicis, uh, look to kick the crap out of his lead leg, because uh, he's very heavy on it, so with your leg kicks, just start marking it up real hard. Uh, keep the volume up on the kicks. Also, if you want to take him to the mat, look for the body lock takedowns, and then look to get top position, and then control him from there. Alright, so how I see this one going? Alright, so I'm, I'm going back and forth on this one a little bit. Uh, I think Giles will hurt him on the feet. I think if he comes in with a pressure... You know, pressure-heavy game plan, same as the Bevan Lewis fight where he started out real fast and looked to put the pressure on Bevan. I think he'll do a lot of damage if he does that. Uh, but also, I could see him falling behind on volume, get his leg marked up, if he just stays at distance and he goes shot for shot with uh, Duplicis. Uh, I don't believe Duplicis' takedowns will be good enough to get Giles down, unless he goes... For like the body lock takedowns, which he hasn't necessarily gone to in his career so far, so I don't expect him to. Uh, but if he does, it's you know it's not great for Giles because he lets 
people get the body lock on him really easily and control him from that position. Uh, I don't get these too often, but I got a gut feeling about this one. I got a gut feeling, kind of visualized it, um, that Giles KOs him, you know, in the second round, just with uh, count of two. Uh, I think he KOs and puts him out cold. So I, yeah, I don't get gut feelings too often. Um, but this was just one that was sticking out for me. Uh, I think, yeah, this fight should be a pick 'em, but just based on how I visualized the fight, I think. Giles edges it, so I've got Giles 51-49, but I'm not really confident in the in betting Giles because of the fight IQ and all the other stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll have a look at the odds and see if they can tempt me in. Alright, so this is a parry match, pretty much where the UFC get the rough draft for their lines, well, the, the bet makers get the rough draft for their lines before they come out to the American market. Uh, and they've got you know, fairly close line here, so I think it's like 55, or, you know, uh, 50 to 47, 46 maybe, um, but yeah, they got a little gap for the draw potential, uh, but yeah, I think overall, it should be about a pick em. that's where I'd line the fight appropriately, uh, I think anyone over $2.20 is value, in this fight, because I believe it's a pick'em. Uh, but yeah, I kind of have that gut feeling, so I'll probably bet it, but I wouldn't recommend betting Giles, especially big. Uh, but I've just got that gut feeling, so I've got to chase that, don't get those too often. Uh, but yeah, so should be an interesting fight at least. Uh, I believe one of them will get finished. So the prediction is Giles by KO.